Hey there, John Paul. Now, uh, you set forth three questions that you wanted answered on the Eurozone situation. Now, your first question was, does Europe need the Euro? Well, realistically, it does and it doesn't. Uh, several of the, they could all function without it. They could go back to their regular currencies and everybody would function just fine. The transition back to them might be a huge problem and would cause uh, problems within the, each individual nations. But overcoming those problems, each nation could function fine without them. However, that undermines the reason why the euro was created to begin with. Now, initially, the euro was created to unite the currencies of several nations in order to create a single currency that was strong enough to compete with the U.S. dollar. Now, at this time, the U.S. had pretty much a, a uh, the time that the euro was formed, the U.S. had a hegemonic uh, power over the entire world economy due to the strength of its currency and the fact that it was also the world's reserve currency. Uh, Europe is seeking to get back some of the former glory it had, uh, pr predominantly before World War II. Uh, decided to form all together, uh, integrate their banks with a one European central bank, and create one currency that was capable of competing with the U.S. currency. Now, also uh, in these days, not so much then, but also now, but a currency that could also compete with China because of the rise of the Asian tiger now with the, the transformation of its own economy. Um, the two countries that chose in the Eurozone that chose specifically not to go with the Euro was the UK and Russia. Now the UK, the pound already has a, a, a great uh, exchange rate with the US dollar, so it's pretty strong against the dollar. So to them, if they were actually to use the Euro, they would actually be losing in their situation. They'd be taking a currency that's uh, would likely have weakened their own currency compared to the one they have now. And Russia just well. Russia wants to stick with the ruble, and they have, they do, and rightfully so in some situations, rightfully not, have trust issues with the, the rest of Europe. And Russia is as Russia does. Now, uh, this using the euro, the existence of the euro has caused some problems. For example, uh, the invasion of Iraq was largely due to uh, Saddam Hussein's decision to sell oil in euros instead of US dollars as was always previously done. Now this was uh, not advantageous for the United States whatsoever because now they had to purchase euros in order to be able to purchase the oil making it more expensive for them and well we've seen in the past how the US is with oil and why those things happen but uh, Europe can function without a euro but it won't have the competitive strength that the euro has by all the nations working together. Now, there's a ton of other reasons. Uh, integration of economies, um, being able to have more free trade, and because they're all using the same currency, it's much, much easier, and a whole bunch of other reasons. But I think predominantly a strong currency that can compete with the US dollar is the primary reason. Now, your second question was as to whether the euro was responsible for the, the problems in Greece. Absolutely not. Greece's problems stem from a financial scheme that they were operating their economy on. I will link to a previous video I did on it maybe two years ago when all this started as to what actually caused the problem. But realistically, no, you could not blame the euro for the situation they're in. You could, however, blame the euro for the fact that they're all more integrated and thus suffering more because of the global financial collapse. But specifically, no, you couldn't actually really blame the existence of the euro for the, the problems that Greece is having right now. Um, now, you asked about worrying about the Greek situation. Uh, realistically, everybody should be worrying about this situation. Um, a collapse of the Greek economy, because it does use the euro and its interconnectedness to all the other eurozone countries that also use the euro, would have what economists call shocks into their economies as well. And it could turn into like a domino effect of them all suffering shocks as well and weakening their economies and them weakening others. And then there is a genuine possibility to whatever degree I do not know, but there is a possibility that it, such a problem like this could theoretically cause a domino effect taking down the entire Eurozone. Obviously, there would be uh, strenuous actions taken against it, but it's very possible that something like this could happen. 
if one of the eurozone partners goes down, it would be devastating for the rest of the eurozone. And then the eurozone going down would hurt everybody who trades with the eurozone. Now, uh, this was largely caused by a large financial schemes that were brought all across the world. Although, interestingly, these shocks that would affect the world system would have the least effect on those who disconnected their financial systems from the world uh, banking cartels. Some of those countries that did disconnect themselves or have always previously made sure that they were not too connected to it was um, Iran, Cuba, who are not as connected as the rest of the world is to the, the world banking system, North Korea is almost completely detached from the world economic system. The shocks or global shakes that could happen as a result of the euro going down could only affect North Korea only in so far as it affects their ability to buy things from outside the country that they are not able to produce themselves. Uh, the vast majority of these are coming from China and to a lesser degree coming from Russia. Now this would have less of an effect on North Korea, but it would still have an effect. Hence one of their advantages that they've uh, disconnected their central bank from the world, uh, essentially for, for the most part the world capitalist system and the, the world capitalist banking system as well. Uh, North Korea and formerly Libya were the, and I believe also Iran, were the only countries whose banks uh, whose uh, central banks were not privately owned. The, the central bank in uh, North Korea is not owned privately. It's actually owned by the state. Uh, one of the other people that do it is Cuba, Iran, and now formerly Libya. Although we can imagine after the invasion and the NATO uh, reorienting of the entire country that their central bank would now become privately owned. But um, these would cause shocks that would affect everybody in Canada, Australia, Japan, all across the entire world. Uh, I hope those answer your questions.